What up, everyone? Got another video here. Time for a movie review. And this time around, we got Intergalactic Boogie. Or as some people call it, Space Jam. So, I took out my little note sheet here and just wrote down some things that were interesting to me. And one thing I wanted to mention, as far as moving, uh, sorry, reviewing movies in general, something to note whenever you watch any of my reviews, or any review of a movie for that matter, there's always two perspectives to a movie. So for example, um, I'm reviewing this movie because I've also seen the first Space Jam. So I had certain expectations of quality based on what I've seen for the first movie. I'm judging it based on that. But someone that hasn't seen the first movie is going with a completely fresh perspective and they might view the movie differently. So it's the same movie, but it's two different perspectives. And the same with, like, the MCU movies, like Endgame or something like that. I remember when I went and saw that movie, it was a big deal. It was super important. I loved Marvel growing up. I had all the cards, the comics, the toys, action figures. And I had seen every movie in the MCU. It was a big deal. But I had a girlfriend at the time who hadn't seen anything. And she went and saw it with me. She still liked the movie, but it was a completely different experience. I was over the moon ecstatic, and she was just kind of there. And that's because I come from a different background of knowing all that stuff, so I have different standards than the average person. I try to give my reviews both perspectives. Whenever I'm reviewing a movie, my opinion is based on like an experienced perspective. Like most of these movies, most Marvel movies, I have a background of it, I have a lot of knowledge. But the score I give is more for the general population, based on if you were just watching this movie for the first time and had no background, what would you think and feel about it? So that's something I wanted to touch on and make sure people understand, specifically for this movie, because there's a lot of expectations that kind of have to be leveled out. So keep that in mind for all my reviews, but this one more specifically. That being said, I did see this first Space Jam movie when I was a kid, and I watched it again recently to like get updated on it, and I love that movie. It's fantastic. But, you know, I wouldn't say it's a great cinematic feature. I like it because of goofy things like cartoon characters that I like. like that made it interesting to me. So, going into this movie, that was my expectation. Like, I didn't expect this to be like this major, mind-blowing blockbuster, this inquisitive movie that really makes you think hard. Like, no, that's not why I'm going into it. I just wanted to see some cool cartoons and basketball shit. That's what I went into it thinking, and that's what I'm going to be reviewing that as the standard. So, that being said, um, just going down the bullet list I made from the very beginning of the movie... Uh, the very beginning of the movie was very similar to the original. Almost exactly the same. It started out with um, LeBron James as a kid. The original one started out with Michael Jordan as a kid. had a very identical scene. And this one had really good music, just like the original did. The original had really good music. I remember that, that Space Jam song. Man, who didn't like that song? That song was the shit. It still is. I love that song. It's fantastic. This newer movie had a lot of good music to it, too. Like, the accompanying tracks, like, really got you hyped, and it was very fitting. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And I like the intro um, the same way they did the first one with MJ, how they kind of went through his whole career. Um, I like that. I don't know. I just it set it up very well because, honestly, I know who LeBron James is. I know who Michael Jordan is, but I don't know a ton about them. Like, I don't, like, watch every game they're in. I don't even watch basketball that often. So it's just it was cool to see that because that's of the perspective of someone that doesn't really watch basketball all the time. And I liked all the cool effects they had with, like, the dunking graphics and things like that. Uh, very nicely done. Things I noticed, things I enjoyed. Now, as far as the expectation, one thing I noticed right off the bat, terrible acting. Just just horrible, god-awful, but that was to be expected. I wasn't disappointed by that, and I'm not judging it based on that, because I figured that going into it, because I did see the first one, and the first one had horrible acting as well. And LeBron James even made a joke in the movie, because uh, they asked him to do acting in the movie, and he made a joke like, oh, and basketball players act, it never goes well. And I thought that was funny. kind of broke the fourth wall a little bit. But it's funny because it's true. Because even he's admitting that he's a terrible actor. He knows he's not a good actor, and that's why he made the joke. The same way that Michael Jordan was not a good actor. It was bad. I mean, honestly, LeBron James was better than Michael Jack or uh, Michael Jordan. Sorry, I keep saying Michael Jackson. Michael Jordan, uh, he was a better actor than him, but still terrible, like not good. And this, even when I saw the original one as a kid, like it was terrible acting, but it was expected. He's a basketball player. He's not supposed to be a good actor. So I thought it was really funny that they put that joke in there because they're admitting to it that it's not good acting, but you shouldn't have come into this movie expecting it. So that's your own fault if you did. 
So that's one thing. And most of them are terrible actors. Not just LeBron James, like some other the characters too. It was just kind of goofy acting. And I kind of thought Don Cheadle's character was, was kind of dumb. Like, I, I get the idea of it, like a, a kind of a sentient algorithm type of thing. So I get where they're coming from. But I don't know. I just didn't like his character. And he's, his acting in this movie wasn't that great either. So that character in general was kind of dumb. But, you know, again, it didn't matter. It was the same in the first one. They had a goofy villain character that the Danny DeVito voiced that nobody cared about. It was a stupid premise. Obviously, the storyline makes no sense. And, again, standards. Shouldn't have gone into it expecting that. So, yeah, terrible story and premise. None of the things add up doesn't make sense. Didn't matter. Not a big deal. Um, so I liked a lot of the effects in this movie. Uh, the same in the first one. All the f- interesting stuff kind of happened in the first half of the movie. And they don't get to playing basketball to the second half. And then it's just like, I don't know, it's just not as interesting. It, it's I still watched it, but that's to me that's just kind of like the boring part. I, I don't know why. But the first half is so much more interesting. I really liked it when he um, went into the tune world kind of and he was going through the different planets and all the different planets were of like different movies that was super cool and they had the matrix planet because why not i like how they had to do that shameless plug because they have the matrix movie coming up so they put it in this one so i i thought that was funny i thought that was funny they put a matrix planet in there and that was really cool to just see all the different franchises i i really like that and i think that was a smart move for them um the original space jam didn't really have any of that. Didn't have any franchise crossovers. But there was one more live action with Looney Tunes. It was Looney Tunes Back in Action. I recently watched that this week too because I was just curious about it. There's been three movies, Space Jam, that one, and then this one. So those have been the live action Looney Tunes ones. So I watched it, just curiosity. And they did some crossovers. And it's like, oh, that was really funny and entertaining. That movie was actually pretty decent, by the way. I, I liked it as bad as much as I like Space Jam. So I thought that was pretty good. And they did a lot more crossovers in this one because I think they realized that's what people like. It's just in general. People love crossovers. Like, who doesn't? I mean, obviously, there's a time and a place for them, but everyone loves crossovers. Everyone loves characters. Any video game you ever play, the most downloaded content is new characters. The videos people want to see is leaks on new characters. The biggest movies are the crossover ones with more characters. That's just a key to success right there. The more characters and franchises you can get in, it just makes it better. I like that. Just same with Ready Player One. It was so it was so exciting because you never knew who was going to pop up. And that made it really cool. And they had tons of crossovers in this. And I really love... Like, it was very, very subtle. I don't know if you picked up on it. The different animation styles. So when they traveled into different cartoons, like that Superman one, that traditional Superman cartoon, for example, they actually changed the art style to fit that. And it was a new scene. So it was really cool how they had the different animation styles in the movie, and they matched whatever universe they were in. It was very subtle changes. You had to really pay attention. It wasn't very obvious, but that was really cool. And those scenes they recreated, they had um, new footage that they made the cartoons that they recreated and it was very impressive how they did that i really liked that i liked how they matched the the franchise they were in on the other hand of that um some things that weren't that great were some of the live action ones so uh, like the cartoon ones are funny the superman one was really cool they had rick and morty in there that was super funny and but the when they went into some of the live action movies like there was an austin powers one they just used old footage and i wasn't a big fan of that i didn't really like that and i i'm assuming they kind of had to due to budget constraints because it would be really expensive to go track down those actors and bring them back that would have probably been way too high a budget but that was what i like the animated ones they made new animated scenes for the looney tunes to be in but the live action ones they literally just cut and pasted scenes from the actual movie you can tell because the quality was lower and the picture was kind of grainy and then just inserted looney tunes in there i didn't like that as much i liked the, the reference they were going for but since they used the old footage it just made it seem like a really old outdated joke like when they were it, when the granny was in the matrix like i get the joke they were going for but it just seemed super outdated because the quality looked terrible i wish they had done like the cartoons and made new scenes for them to be in. I think it would have been that much better. Even if they couldn't have gotten the original actors to come back and reprise their roles, which was probably the reason, they still should have recreated the scene just with like stunt doubles or something that looked like it. I think that would have been that much better if they recreated it and had it HD, and I think that would have made a world of difference, and I think that would have carried the joke more. So I got what they were going for, and I'm glad they had the franchises in there. It was still cool, but it just killed it because it was old scenes. But the cartoon ones were absolutely fantastic, and I like that. 
So, what else? Uh, da -da 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 -da. So, oh, sorry. Screensaver started. Da so finally, when they go through all the different worlds, they come back and they become the CGI versions of themselves. And you know, I normally I don't like it when they go from 2D to 3D. It's always bothered me. But this time I actually didn't mind it. They actually did a very good job on those CG models. It looked, looked legit and it wasn't really cheaply done, which was surprising. For a cartoon character, CG is usually really crappy and that's fine. Like nobody really cares. They don't have to look real. But they actually put in some money and it looked pretty legit. I was honestly kind of surprised. And it didn't really bother me too much going from 2D to 3D. Normally I hate it, but I actually didn't mind it. They looked pretty decent. And I get why they do that, just because it doesn't matter how nice the cartoon is. The live action and cartoons mixing together, it just always looks ridiculously fake. And, you know, it's usually supposed to, so no big deal. But when you're doing a movie like this, um, I think it was better off that they went with the... 3D CGI models because it just made it flow a lot better. So I, I was actually okay with that. And I was very surprised on the quality of it. And then as far as the second half of the movie, like I didn't care about the basketball game. I was focused on the background. There was so much shit in the background. It was amazing. It was like when I saw Ready Player One and they had that big fight scene. And I wanted to keep pausing it like every two seconds and going back. And I'm like, oh my gosh, wait, did I just see that? Who was that? Like so many little characters in the background that was so amazing. But I couldn't do that because I don't know if you guys have this problem. My HBO app sucks. So I don't know if it's because I'm using a PS4. Maybe it's just not compatible. If you have a PS4 in the comments and you run HBO Max, let me know if you have the same problem. Mine just, just doesn't work. It's so unresponsive. Every time I try to rewind, it would just like freeze or it would take too long to press it. So that app sucks. But anyway... Back to it, uh, there were so many characters in the background, and every two seconds I was not focusing on the game they were playing and looking what characters I could find. One that I thought was so cool is that they had the Danny DeVito penguin in there, which is funny because Danny DeVito played a character in Space Jam. And they also had the like 1950s TV show penguin like side by side. So not only did they have the crossing franchises, they had like the different multiverse versions of these characters. And I thought that was so cool. And I'd much rather look in the background and pick out all these cool things than watch the basketball game they were playing. But I thought that was really amazing. And I'm sure that took an astronomical amount of time. One, just picking the characters and setting a lineup and then creating 3D models of every single one. Because when they were in the crowd, like, you know, when they have stadiums and movies, it's usually just like blurred black figures. But no, they had actual little people, actual little characters from all these movies, many of which didn't have lines or stand out, but they were there. And I, I'm going to go watch it again and keep picking out new ones. There were so many cool things back there. So I thought that was really cool. And I think that's a smart move of them, once again, to get all these franchises in there. It just makes it so much more fun and interesting. I love that. Um, at the end of the movie, Don Cheadle did, uh, did like that transformation and he became all CGI. Why? I don't know. Why they had to CGI his whole face, I'm not totally sure. He looked creepy as fuck, man. He looked super creepy. I, I, I did not like the way he, he turned out. Like, I didn't really like him before, so the, Don Cheadle as a, a whole, that character was just annoying. And then he turned into this, like, rapey pedophile super giant. Like, ugh, it was, it was just really weird and awkward to see, so... The rest of the CGI was fine, but that was just kind of weird. And in general, they just had a lot of cool effects. They had a lot of cool things like when Don Shield's character would talk, sometimes he would get that like, like a, I don't know what to call it, like that matrixy blue texture over him. And I liked that they had all these cool effects like that. They must have had a fantastic art director. I'm assuming that's who's in charge of a lot of that because it really looked good. It looked very clean and it looked so nice like it looked like such a good update from the original space jam because that was just cartoons and there was none of that extra effects and this had tons of it and i thought that was all great and you know i'm super bummed that uh michael jordan didn't make a cameo in the movie when they that scene that they had him so michael jordan as soon as i saw the silhouette i'm like oh dude that's michael b jordan for sure and it was so i thought that was funny still like i got the joke they were going for so that was funny, but I'm bummed he didn't make a cameo still. I was kind of hoping that he would make one like after the credits or something like that, like a quick two-second cameo, but they didn't, so I was kind of bummed about that, but, you know, no big deal. And overall, that's, that's pretty much it. So those are the things that I noticed, things that stood out to me. There's still plenty to talk about in the movie, like, but the point of what I do here, things that stand out to me, good or bad. 
I don't need to mention every mundane thing that happens because it's just not important. But if there's things you want to mention, please do so in the comments. If there's things that you wanted to see and or things I didn't notice or things you didn't notice, please let me know. And let me know all about your thoughts and your score and your comment in the comments. So overall, I'm going to give this movie a 6.5 out of 10. I personally, like I said in the beginning, there's my uh, opinion of it and that's, there's what I think the rest of the world would feel about it. And honestly, it might even be a little higher than that. Between 6.5 and a 7, I still got to mull it over a little bit. But in, somewhere in between there, maybe I'll give it like a 6.75 around that score. And that's because I really liked it. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. But... I don't think the average person, like for example, one, if they hadn't seen the first Space Jam, or for example, if they just weren't into movies that much, and they didn't recognize a lot of those franchi franchises in there, and they didn't get a lot of the jokes they made, then they might not as enjoy it as much. So I gotta give it a rating based on what the general population would think, and I think that's between a 6.5 and a 7 out of 10, because it was still good. If you didn't know any of that stuff, it still would have been entertaining, but it's obviously, it's, it's not... An amazing thing like i said the acting was goofy there's a lot of weird stuff in there so the average person might not like that but people that have seen the first one we know what to expect we know that acting wasn't supposed to be good and yeah we assume lebron james was an amazing actor we just go to see because we like those cartoons so that's my score but let me know your score and i'm gonna miss these in-home releases by the way i I'm kind of liking these HBO Max ones because I can take my notes, then I can take pictures of the screen so I can reference them above. I can show pictures of what I'm talking about. When I'm in the movies, I can't do that. I can't be taking pictures in there and I can't have my phone lit up taking notes. So it's much more difficult. So I feel like it's much better to review movies when it's at home. So I, I like that a little bit more. And I appreciate that. And I'm going to miss that too. I do like being in the theater more, but, you know, is what it is. So those are my thoughts on the movie. Those are things that stood out to me. Those are things I thought were interesting. Let's talk about it in the comments. Uh, we're going to have some good movies coming up. I think the next one is Suicide Squad, perhaps? Because I think that comes out first week in August. Something like that. So that'll be good. we I got two weeks in between then. I don't know. We'll probably do some nerdy news or something like that. I don't really have anything planned. And it's too early for boxes. But we'll see. So... Thank you for watching and supporting. Let me know any questions you have in the comments, and we'll talk about it there. Thank you for watching and supporting. Love you all so much. Peace. Wolf, do you have anything to say? Pup, do you have anything to say?